What's up everybody? This is CQF and today I'm going to be talking about the RSI or the Relative Strength Index. I want you to better understand this indicator. I'm going to show you how people trade the RSI and most importantly I'm going to show you how to calculate the RSI by hand. I'm a big believer that you should not use an indicator unless you can calculate it. You just simply do not understand what they really mean and the little nuances that come with each indicator unless you can get your hands dirty and calculate it yourself. So I built a free tool that I'll reveal at the end of this video that you can get your hands dirty and calculate the RSI yourself. So what is the RSI? It's the relative strength index. It's an oscillator, so it's best used in ranging markets. It was developed in 1978. It ranges between zero and 100, so it's scaled that way. It's uh, usually a 14 period horizon, but you can actually change that depending on uh, what horizon you'd like to look at. And the periods could be any increment, so you could be looking at minutes, hours, days, week, um, whatever you'd like. And the graphic on the right, I think, summarizes it very well. Uh, the RSI, when you see it on the chart, it probably seems kind of complex, but at the end of the day, it just represents the size of recent gains versus the size of recent losses. So how to calculate RSI. So here, I'm just going to give you a basic uh, formula overview for your own records. Skip over this if you don't care about uh, here and just want to get to the free tool. Uh, but I think it's good to understand from a theoretical standpoint what's going on. So first, you need to calculate the daily gain or loss. If the day was a gain, then simply use a zero as a value for the loss. Then you want to calculate the average gain or loss uh, over the 14 periods, or whatever per yeah, number of periods you decide. Then you simply need to divide the average gain by the average loss. This is considered the RS. And then point four, you scale the RS to put it between a zero and 100. Now this is just a basic example of the unsmooth RSI. In the tool, I'll be showing that what they call the smooth RSI, which I believe is what is in trading view. So one way people utilize RSI in terms of trading is the overbought and oversold theory. So like I told you, RSI ranges between zero and 100. If there's a value over 70, this generally means it's thought to be overbought, which is a sell signal. If it's under 30, it's oversold or a buy signal. Now, everybody has little nuances. Some people uh, might have a criteria that's a bit more stringent, maybe 20 versus 80. Uh, whatever it is, but the point is on the extremes, it's considered overbought and oversold. However, in my opinion, this is very, very simplistic and you want to make sure you utilize other indicators or other theories or uh, trading tools to put together the mosaic. Just simply looking at overbought, oversold uh, might get you in trouble, but it's a piece of the puzzle. Another tool that traders utilize with RSI called divergences. So divergences can be bullish or bearish, and it generally points out the potential for a trend reversal. So what's a divergence at the 30,000 foot view? It means price and RSI are moving in opposite directions. So a higher high in price, and a lower high in RSI is a bearish divergence. A lower low in price and a higher low in RSI is a bullish divergence. So take a look at the chart here. You can see price up top made a higher high. It's gotten higher, right? You see the little blue line. And the RSI at the bottom of the chart, it's just made a lower high. So the indicator in this case, the RSI, is declining where the price is increasing. This is a bearish divergence and a potential sign for a trend reversal. As with any indicator, it's not perfect. Uh, you need to really understand it and what are some criticisms of RSI 
it could be very backward looking. If you're looking at an unsmooth RSI, say the 14 periods, uh, the period 14 periods ago has the same impact as the last period. That's generally not what you want. That's why you smooth it. But even with the smooth RSI, it's still very historical driven. A bullish bearish divergence simply means the weakening of the trend, uh, which doesn't mean the trend is ending. So just keep that in mind. It can also counteract momentum strategies. Momentum is the most powerful factor on the planet. So if you're uh, selling something because it's overbought or uh, buying something because it's oversold, you're going against momentum. But since RSI is say over 14 periods, and just depending on what's rolling off the back, you know, end of the 14 periods, what's coming on, it may not actually allow you to catch reversals. So you're not getting uh, either a good part of momentum, either the the, the actual momentum or the short, short term reversal aspect of momentum. So that could be pretty dangerous from an RSI standpoint. And this all really means is that price can stay in the overbought or oversold period for quite some time. So let's learn how to calculate RSI. Here's the free tool. There's the link. Obviously, you can't click in the video right now. So I'll put the link in the description and it, it'll be available and you can utilize it however you wish to use it. Uh, before we get to the free tool, you know, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like this video. If you like the tool, you know, comment. I'd really appreciate it. And then also follow me on Twitter. So let's jump right into the tool. So here it's a Google Doc. It's called Calculating RSI. Pretty simple. I already filled it out. I'll delete everything and we can kind of go piece by piece to show you how it's done. I have comments in here so you can actually see the formulas too. And we'll just go from there. All right, so that's get rid of all this here and I just put a fake price in here uh, you could see here column B it's just you know random stock here starting at out about 18 bucks and generally declines so what we need to do is calculate the up price change and the down price change so here you can see the formula I have right here. So I'll just copy this and I'll walk you through what it means. So what we're doing here, we're saying if B3 is greater than B2, so if the most recent price is greater than the last closing price, then it went up. And then simply subtract B3 and B2. So how much did it go up? And if it went down, that's where you see the zero. So if it went down, give a zero. If not, how much did it go up? Here it went up one cent. And then over here, we have the down column. So very similar formula here, where we're simply saying that the most recent period, is it up or down? In this case, B3 is less than B2. So we're trying to see if it went down. And if it did uh, subtract out B2 and B3, we want all the numbers to be positive. That, that's why B2 and B3 are flipped here. And then if the price actually went up, give a zero. So you can see in this case, the price went up. So we have a zero there. We'll just drag these guys down. All my comments keep getting in the way. So we'll drag these guys down. I really don't like Google Docs, uh, but it's good, good to share. All right, so the average gain. So here we're using the 14 periods, which you can see in K2. Uh, you can have as many as you want, 21, 28, doesn't really matter. That's up to you, but the standard is 14. So the average gain, the first part, now I'm gonna show you the smooth RSI. But the beginning is the same process as the unsmooth RSI. So this is just a simple average formula. You can see C3 to C16. I'll actually just type it in and do it myself. And that's 17. 
and all these comments make it hard. Sorry about that. And I will do the same thing here. Now, what's important here is, remember the up, we actually don't get a figure or the down until the second period. That is why we're only calculating 14 periods, but it's starting in the 15th period because the first period was basically no data. And that's great. So, so far, so good. Now let's calculate the RS, the relative strength. It's the average gain divided by the average loss. Again, very simple. Sorry, my average loss did not switch to D, so I'll do that manually. Okay, and then what is the RSI? So I have the formula here to scale it. So this is taking the RS, which is 2.14, and scaling it. All right, so let me get my fill back here for you guys. Uh, that's not the right fill. That guy. I'm gonna make this white. All right, so the RS here is 2.14 and the RSI is 68.16. So this would be the unsmooth RSI. It's our first data point. So how do we smooth the RSI? So it's basically using an exponential weighting mechanism. Now, I'll be making a video in the future talking about moving averages and exponential moving averages. So check that out when it's available, get a better idea of what exactly it is. But on the high level, what it's doing, it's weighting the most recent data point more and weighting the data points further away less. So it's giving more impact to what's happened recently. And we're doing this weighting mechanism right here. So you can see the exponential average. So let me just throw this in here real fast. So what is it? So let's take a look. So what we're doing is multiplying E16, which is the most recent or last period's average gain, uh, multiplied by the number of periods minus one. So since it's exponential and the way this is moving to the moving average here, is it has to subtract out one, so it's 13 periods. And then we're adding C17, which is the most recent up of the current period, and then dividing it all by the number of periods. So here again, I should be able to drag it, but my comments keep getting in the way. So I'll just cheat and do it this way which again, all these comments will be here for you guys, so you can learn how to do it. You can tell here the RSI is not really changing yet uh, too much because the return in this period is very, very minor, uh, $18.52 to $18.53. So, All right, so the RSI uh, moved up ever so slightly, it's been a positive return to 68.54. So let me drag this all the way down for you. It's a 14 period of RSI, but we're gonna go all the way to 100 here. Now I just labeled the periods just one through 100. The reality, these could be hours, these could be days, these could be, you know, five minute, you know, periods. It doesn't necessarily matter. So the periods could be whatever you'd like it to be, but generally RSI is calculated with 14 of them at a time. So here we have the RSI. Uh, maybe I'll plot this another time. That's not too important. You can actually see the RSI right here. So it's 68. Uh, it drops down pretty quick as the price declines. Here you can see the price going to 15 bucks, 14 bucks, 12 and a half, so on and so forth. 
You can see the RSI dips below 30 and they're in the oversold category. It stays there for a while. Then eventually pops back up right here, decent return, and the RSI kind of settles in the middle. So that is actually how you calculate RSI. Uh, now, when I mentioned certain things like where things roll off versus come on, uh, the most recent period, what that means is, say, a divergence. If you're just using an unsmooth RSI, something where 14 periods ago you had a, a large down day, and then the most recent period, the period coming up, you have a medium down day or a smaller down day. What that generally means the RSI is going to be going up because you're rolling off a really bad day and replacing it with a not so bad day. So the average loss isn't as bad. However, price will actually still decline because you know the most recent day was an average down day. So that's where you need to really dive under the hood to really understand what's going on, not just take things you know face value, uh, just because you don't want to be buying something or selling something because of what happened, say 14 days ago or 28 days ago, and it's impacting RSI in a very specific way. So you just have to be pretty cautious and really understand the price history. But either way, now you guys understand what RSI is. It is a battle between the average gain and the average loss, and it's simply scaled between a zero and 100. If you guys like this video, uh, please like it, subscribe to my channel. Uh, the link to this little free tool will be in the description. Have at it, uh, you know, build your own RSI for whatever strategy you're trying to do. Gives you the formula so you can code it whatever you like it is all up to you uh, good luck trading out there take care